Thanks for joining me today. I'll be sculpting a monster here, which you will be able to download and use in your games. So if you are starting your game development career or journey and you're learning and you just need some monster graphics, I'll be creating uh, monster graphics pretty regularly so you can uh, use them in as placeholder graphics or you can use them in your end product uh, however you'd like to use these so they'll be free you can download this from the link in the description which will be on my patreon page but you do not need to be a paid member this will be free to everyone so uh, you can see here i'm using an older program called Sculptress. This is free. You can use this yourself as well. These are from the people that make um, ZBrush. So if you happen to need a more modern program, you can use ZBrush. But the skills that you develop in Sculptress, again, this has been discontinued, uh, but the skills that you develop with sculpting here will translate to more modern programs. You can see I use the draw brush here to basically uh, create the basic shape of the creature here. This is actually going to be a pretty fast, simple sculpt. We will be creating a blob creature and it will be humanoid. We will rig using an auto rigger called Mixamo and there will be animations provided. So you will be able to use this in your games. It will come with animations and it will be fully rigged as a humanoid. So I'm considering where the mass of this blob creature is going to be. I'm considering where the cakes are in the back and where the stomach will be. I want it to feel like there is an effect of gravity on this creature, so it's there should be some sort of jelly roll around the hip to waist area where gravity would pull down the mass of the creature because he's quite slimy or gelatinous. Um, but I, I want there to be a cuteness to this. So in general, when you are designing, you uh, have things that are round and soft looking generally are less threatening so maybe this creature is not something that's terribly powerful but you fight a bunch of them i still want to keep in mind the idea of expressing that perhaps there is a spine or the idea of a spine even though he does not necessarily have bones and you will see i want to be able to express the idea of muscles in the shoulder area this will help it look logical it will help it make sense as opposed to just having a random shape stick out of its body um, considering the look of how muscles attach on any other creature now when we are sculpting and modeling and and creating any sort of art you are not actually creating the object that you are expressing. You are expressing the idea of something. You are sharing the idea of something with the viewer, with the player. And so you need to keep that in mind or you could get stuck spending way too long trying to make something look verbatim, to look hyper-realistic. But that is going to be a huge waste of time for you and that will stop you from developing your ability to creatively express something. Your goal is to express the idea of something and then to filter that through your own lens. Your life experiences are the filter that affect how the idea is expressed. And that's what makes things interesting. So I am making this idea of a belly here and uh, we'll save that as stage two and you can see I've sort of got the idea of a belly sticking out and I'm smoothing, uh, smoothing out the creatures. Now what I'm using is a reduce brush. I am finding the areas that do not require a high poly count. These are made out of polygons or triangles. They can be quads as well or, or other, but um, it's best to have a three-sided polygon. They're all connected, sort of like connect the dots in a 3D space. Now, the more polygons we have on a character model, the harder it is for a game engine to render, and that's when you see frame rate drops, is if the poly count uh, is too high. So I'm reducing the poly count. It's not that big of a deal to have one creature, but let's say you want to have a hundred of these creatures on screen. If the poly count is very high, it will cause the frame rate to drop. You can see in the bottom left, I've got about 7,900 
or so triangles. That's all right. As you reduce the poly count, the creature will start to look kind of jagged, so we want to balance that out. I'm going to add in a new texture here, and I'll just save the set for later. And we'll go ahead and paint this little fella. So we can hue shift the color later on to create variations, but we'll start out with blue, just a nice, calm, easy color for blue. Just adjusting some settings here and making sure everything is set up. And what we want to do is just make sure that we apply a base coat first and we cover all the areas of the model. It will take some attention to detail. Make sure you don't miss any spots here. This is the base coat. Then you can come back after the base coat and you can adjust it to look just the way that you want. I'm sculpting this model using a Wacom drawing tablet. It has pressure sensitivity and also a control dial that is touch sensitive. It makes it easier to control certain aspects like zooming in and out or controlling the size of the brush. I want to make sure I don't have too many lines, too many hard lines on the creature here. As you can see, there's some darker areas. I want to have some, but not too many. I don't want him to look like some sort of rock creature. So we'll just keep fine tuning the visual look of this until it's something that I'm, I'm happy with. I don't want small, fine details uh, when it comes to sort of a slime creature. I want the, uh, the details to be uh, not so highly defined. We're going to use shader map for here to generate our normal maps and help us get started on our specular map. But later in the setup process, I determined that having the normal maps didn't look right. It just made them look like a rock creature. So I removed the normal maps, but I do um, use the base of the specular map here and I do more work on this in a separate imaging program like you can use Photoshop or GIMP. Now we're going to use Mixamo. We will upload our character and we will use this to rig. And the process of rigging is basically adding bones to the character so you can animate it procedurally in the engine. This is a process that many, many years ago used to take a very long time and was quite frustrating. These days we have auto riggers that set up the bones for us, but they generally only go so far when you have a non-human like this, you generally have to do more work. So I use this to auto rig the character and then I load this into another 3D modeling program and I further uh, refine it. You can see that there is harshness in the polygons there's some sort of harsh clipping for the bone influences i'm going to go ahead and download this and when you download this again it will be free i'll set that up as a humanoid when you do download this then uh, it will come with the animations here let's go ahead and just set these up let's go ahead and size them up to where we think it's about right and we'll just set up a material here so we can see what this should look like. Now, a good idea is uh, finding your own shaders for your projects, what seems appropriate. I would strongly recommend finding a shader that has subsurface scattering capabilities that allows light to enter from the other side. And it makes it look like a light is bouncing around inside the mass and then bouncing out the other side. It looks just very cool. <laughs> I'm going to see how it looks with and without the normal maps, and I'm going to remove it. Again, we automatically, or not automatically, we procedurally generated the normal maps. In this situation, I don't think it looked right, but I created a specular map, which really gives the effect that I'm looking for is some surface imperfections and changes in the uh, shininess and smoothness in some areas. It just makes it look more interesting. We're going to set up a couple other colors as well, which will be included in the download. Of course, you can set up your own colors by hue shifting, and you can create any color of slime creature which you require.
I'll create a test animator controller. Make sure you select the looping box if you need this to loop. You can see there's harshness again where the bones are not really uh, influencing certain parts of the model. Let's go ahead and make it slightly transparent as well. Yeah, that really sells the image. Now off screen, I loaded this into a different 3D modeling program and smoothened out the bone weight influences so it has a much more organic and refined look to it. There we go. Let's take a look at our blob creature. This will be free to use for your projects. You can't resell the model. You can't package it and sell it as your own, but you can use it in your own projects as part of the user license. So I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at the process. Thanks very much for joining me today. Again, this is free for everyone to download, so you can use that in your projects, and I hope that I can help you uh, with your journey on game development. Thanks very much for joining me today. The music itself, uh, you can also download that for free, so please enjoy that. Take care of yourselves, be well, and I'll be very busy with my game development work, so it will be a bit difficult for me to respond to comments for the next few weeks or so. I will, I will try but I'm very busy finishing up my own projects. So I'll do what I can to uh, continue sharing these free assets with you to help you with your games. Please take care of yourselves, be well, and work hard, believe in yourself, and make something cool for people. All right, take care.